Now the gloves are coming off. Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. From here on out, spoilers, we're going in, yeah? Movie is a 10 out of 10. Absolutely incredible. This movie shows to me they planned this from the first Spider-Man movie. For the first Spider-Man movie, this script must have been already written. Because you cannot thread the needle so well. There was no retconning from the original um, Spider-Man into Spider-Verse. There was no retconning. The movie is a continuation of that movie. Uh, Miles Morales' place in the story is key for a reason. They say that in this movie, Spot reveals to him that he is the original anomaly. He's not supposed to be Spider-Man. Spider-Man died because of him. When he got bit by the spider, that spider was not even from this timeline. It's from another timeline. And the reason that that spider was there in the first place is originally because of Spider-Man, Miles Morales. He hit a scientist, um, Spot, Jonathan Ohm, with a bagel or something like that. And it caused him to knock something over and just make a mistake. And it caused like a accident in his laboratory. Where they were, he was basically trying to mess about with portals and open dimensions and stuff like that. And he got turned into Spot. A man that is an interdimensional being who basically can open portals into different realms and different realities, right? Jonathan Ohm. So essentially, he was created by Spider-Man. And he was in a different timeline, multiverse. And in that multiverse, he just happened to bring a spider on accident with him into this um, spider um, spider verse, the one with Miles Morales, and that spider from Earth forty two bit Miles Morales. So that spider was not meant to be in this um, multiverse with Miles Morales. He was never supposed to get bit. He was never supposed to become Spider Man, and that's why Spider Man for Miles Morales' universe died. He's the whole reason that there is the Spider-Verse is in chaos. It's because of Miles Morales. The original Earth that is supposed to have a Spider-Man doesn't have a Spider-Man. Because the spider that was supposed to bite whoever's supposed to become Spider-Man. Whether that was uh, Peter Parker, whether that was Miles Morales, whether it was Ben Riley. Whether it was a Penny Parker. Whoever it was that was supposed to be. It could have even been Jefferson Davis. It could have been anybody. Yeah. Who was supposed to become Spider-Man in, in Earth 42. Didn't happen. There was no Spider-Man in that universe. The only universe without Spider-Man. Because of Jonathan Ohm. Spot. When he travelled that to that Earth 42, he accidentally took along with him, like when, you know, when he was opening his portals, the spot portals, and as that spider came through with him and bit Mars Morales. And that is the source of all the chaos. And then you've got this guy, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. And his universe got wiped out. Essentially, well, the universe, because his family died, got tragedy. The same way every single Spider-Man's family gets 
tragedy with either Aunt May or um, Uncle Ben or with their father or with just a family member, the father, it's like anybody, yeah? If that is the common thread through every single Spider-Verse is they have to have tragedy, you know, to create the loop of without, and what is it? With power comes great responsibility, yeah? And the tragedy that facilitates the motivation for Spider-Man. You go against the odds. No matter how um, bleak the odds are, you carve your own path. Incredible. Incredible. And you just can't see that coming. But then you also got the story when you see Miles interaction with his mum Rio and she knows that she's and they started to because he's trying to balance his life as Miles and Spider-Man and be a son and try to do his studying and all this type of stuff and you know Gwen Stacy you know his bae before anyone else she's not even in this reality she's in another reality she's the woman that he loves she's not even here She's not even in this reality and they can't be together because they're from different they're from different multiverses, you know. So that really messes with him, right? But he's still trying to keep it together and be the Spider-Man, the only Spider-Man of his timeline, of his multiverse, right? And they even put Gwen Stacy's story in the beginning and her story was really good. They actually showed... Um, Gwen Stacy's story with um, her dad, um, Christopher Stacy, I think it was. I think it was something like that. Like, yeah. So I think it was. I think the dad's name was like Christopher Stacy or something like that, right? And he, no, 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 no. Let's say it right. If we're gonna say things, we gotta say them right. We'll come back to that. George, George Stacy, George Stacy, right? And that showed her relationship with her dad, right? Because in the beginning, right, um, his brother, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's his brother. Her uncle dies, and basically, uh, he it looks like um, their uncle Ben, yeah, essentially the Ben Stacy. Or the Peter Stacy of that timeline dies because of Gwen, right? But it's not. But that's what it looks like from the perspective of George Stacy, right? And he blames her, the spider, um, the spider woman of that universe. She doesn't know it's Gwen, and she can't tell him that she's Spider Gwen. But she's also always up against her dad, who's a police officer that has it in for her because it's kind of it's personal because he blames the spider woman for the death of his brother. So it's kind of like crazy, right? And you see her story unfold and why her state in her uh, multiverse, it's untenable. It's untenable because she's the criminal. She's not the criminal, but everyone sees her as the paints her as the villain of her multiverse. Her dad hates her because not that he knows it's her, but he hates Spider Gwen. And he believes that Spider Gwen, Spider Woman is the one responsible for the deaths. It's untenable. And that is when Miguel comes there and Spider Woman. From another timeline um, comes to that universe, you know, because of the anomalies that are being caused on in that timeline because of Vulture. Like Vulture's going like a little bit crazy um, in that timeline. And they basically go through, like, my girl O'Hara's got like a Spider-Verse force that fixes anomalies in the Spider-Verse. The multiverse that was caused by Miles Morales. But the only thing that they cannot fix. Because it's like pulling on a thread. 
And if you pull on that thread, it will unravel everything. Well, so Miguel O'Hara says, is it you cannot save anyone to do with Miles Morales, Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy, Ben Riley, um, Miguel O'Hara. Can't do it. Can't do it. They have to endure that tragedy in order for that universe to be maintained. Order must be kept. Because he tried to do that. The Miguel O'Hara, he because um he his family died and everything like that. But then there was another timeline where he died. And so what he tried to do was he tried to fill the void that he lost his family and that family lost him. So he went into that timeline to replace the Miguel O'Hara that died and it didn't work out. He basically tugged on the thread and it unraveled the whole universe, that timeline, that multiverse, and it completely just got deleted, right? So that's the reason why he is so... He's warped in his thinking, but it's his logic, right? And that's why he's got, like, the Spider-Verse universe force that basically fixes any type of anomalies to do with the spider people, right? So it's, like, God, like, and then you see, like, Spider-Punk, and you see Cosmic Spider-Man, and you see, um, as I say, Spider-Woman, and all the different types of spiders. Like, that movie is just incredible, man. Like, I'm just, I'm puzzled. I'm puzzled. Um, I'm a little perplexed. Because I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting the movie to be as good as it was. The writing, the characterization, the relationships, the music, the visuals. Like, it just, I think to myself, how do they make movies this good? How... Is it possible that the movies these days are just so not good? But then they show that they can do good films. Because you see something like Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. So you're like, so Hollywood is proving you can actually do incredible stories. Incredible movies. Incredible visuals. You can do it. So why can't you do it? It's just like in gaming. Why has Sony figured it out? Good story. Good graphics. Good characters. Nice world. A lot to do. Mind blown. Why have they figured it out? Take as long as you need, but everyone else can't figure that out. A movie. Just make a good movie. That's it. Good story. Good characters. Interesting protagonist. Cool protagonist. Powerful. Interesting. Multifaceted um, antagonist. Which the main antagonist is Spot and... Miguel O'Hara, uh, Spider-Man 2099. Because Spot starts off like a goofy goofball, bro. But he just gets so consumed in his anger for Spider-Man, Miles Morales. And he's like, you know what? I can't beat you. So what I will do is I'm going to go across the multi multiple verses. He's going to be basically like the one. And then just create all the type of anomalies that created him in every single universe that will just keep on increasing his strength in a multiplicative, not additive, multiplicative um, calculation, which will make him an absolute time traveller, where he could just, or just dimensional traveller, where he can basically be everywhere, anywhere at once. And he says to Spider-Man Miles Morales, I am going to destroy your life. I'm going to give to you what you gave to me. Which was everything and nothing. 
I'm going to take from you like you've taken from me. You took my life away from you. I'm going to take your life away from you too. And that's when he goes to try to target Miles' family and kill off his dad so that he can feel the loss. That he, That's the way he's going to beat Spider-Man. But then Miguel O'Hara tells Spider-Man after he comes to like the spider um, verse force that Miguel O'Hara's created in like the spider realm or whatever it's called. And he tells you you can't do that. You can't save your dad. If you save your dad, you literally will unravel everything we've built up. Everything in every single spider um, spider hero in every single universe, multiverse, spider-verse, it will all unravel. You pull the thread because you are the anomaly. Because essentially there is a a Spider-Man basically from India, right? And Miles Morales is in that timeline, multiverse, and he saves the dad of, I think it's his father-in-law that he saves. And he was not meant to save that guy. He was not meant to, Miles was not meant to save him. Gwen even stopped him to save him and stop him from pulling the thread that will unravel everything. And when he did that, he essentially has caused another anomaly in the Spider-Verse. And he says, there's another anomaly that is going to happen. And that is with, to fix the timeline, your dad, Miles Morales, is going to die. Miles Morales is like, I'm not having that. And he says, sorry, that's how it has to be. You could either save your dad or you could save everyone. And Miles is like, I, was, I, could, I could do both. Why can't I do both? We're Spider-Man. We're supposed to defy the odds. Right? And Miguel O'Hara is just not having it at all. And that's when Spider-Man and Miles Morales breaks out with his Venom Blast. And they and that's when you have like the all the Spider-Men in the whole Spider um Force universe, right? That are in that, you know, Miguel O'Hara's Spider Force syndicate, whatever it is. And they are just chasing Spider-Man throughout that city. And it is incredible. That chase. With all the Spider-Men against Miles Morales. The visuals, bro. And they show everything. They show um, bits from Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. They show things from Spider-Man Lego. They show things with Penny Parker's um, um, storyline. They show things with Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. They show things with um, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Um, they, sh they literally even talk about... Um, Doctor Strange and what happens in Doctor Strange's um, movie that inter that interacts with um, Tom Holland's one where like the universe everything just got like messed up they referenced that right so there's like so much they basically are connecting everything in every single Spider-Man movie, film, cartoon animation, Lego Video game, you even see Spider Man PS4 in this game. You see, um, what's his name again? Um, there was this guy, I can't remember his name. I think it's something Glover. I can't remember his name. Donald? I think it's Donald Glover. Or something like that. Right? Because he was the Prowler, but not becoming the Prowler in Tom Holland's Spider-Man. But he becomes the Prowler, and he is in this movie. Right? But they've captured him in Miguel's um, timeline. He actually has, these are the, some of the prisoners that got into different realities, and we've just captured them and handed them here because they could cause anomalies. If they were to like get out and stuff like that. And you just see so much stuff that connects everything. The video games, the other movies, the cartoons, the animation, the 3D movies. As I said, the Legos. It's just phenomenal, bro. Like, I'm, like 
the people that made this movie, as I said before, they care so much about everything. What a movie. What a movie, man. And then even in the ending, when Miles manages to get past all of the spider people, and he makes it, he says, I'm going back to my home. Right, and he goes into like this the time machine or the dimensional um machine that will take you back to your own timeline. It doesn't send Sp uh, Mars Miles back to his timeline, it sends him back to Earth 42. The Earth that got completely changed because of him. The Earth that has no Spider-Man. Because the spider that was supposed to bite whoever was going to be the Spider-Man of Earth-42. Nobody ever knows who that Spider-Man was going to be. Whether it was Mars Morales. Or whether it was Peter Parker. Whoever it was going to be. Nobody's going to know. It could have been the Mary Jane of that world. Who for all we know. We don't know. could have been anyone. We'll never know. Because that spider was taken to Mars Morales' multiverse timeline. And it bit Mars Morales. Mars Morales got sent to Earth 42. And the music, the visual, everything was just, you knew something was wrong. You knew something weird was going on. The music, the vibe was just eerie. Even everybody in the cinema, even those goofy little shits in the back were silent. That quiet, you could hear a pin drop for about 20 minutes from when Miles Morales got back to that timeline. You literally could hear a pin drop in that cinema. It was crazy, right? I even forgot I was in the cinema. I was so like. I was so into it man. Like. What is going on? And then you see like. The dad is dead. In this timeline. Miles' dad is dead. It's the wife. And the prowler. But the, then it turns out. That the prowler's not even the prowler. In this timeline. Earth 42. Miles Morales is the prowler. And he looks totally different. Right. And what was funny, what I found funny, right, was when everybody saw what Miles looked like, everybody, like, you heard everybody in the cinema go, ugh. Like, nobody, nobody liked the way Miles looked when he was the Prowler, right? Um, he had, like, braids, he had, like, studs in his ears, um, his face, he, he looked like, he had a horrible look on his face. Like a look of just. He's not a good dude. Like he's just. Like he's killed. Essentially. He had the. Sinister. Onimous look in his eye. That it was crazy. That it was united. In the whole cinema. You pretty much had everyone go. Ugh. It was a it's a weird reaction to have because he doesn't look ugly. It's just Miles emanates a very nice, inviting, warm, cool demeanor that we have built up from the beginning of the movie where you see his interaction with his dad. He's just trying to do the right thing as Spider-Man and in his personal life and by Gwen Stacy and just by everybody. And then you see this guy who looks like Miles, but even the way he holds himself, it's not Miles, it's not him. It's not Miles, looks like him. It's the Miles of this universe, the Prowler, but you know, and uh, yeah, that was just like, oh, wow. But it was also like surprising as well. So it was, uh? But it was also like, wow, what, what the hell is happening? And then Gwen Stacy rebels against Miguel O'Hara. And then she comes to this, un and she comes, and then she finds Miles Morales because she goes to Miles Morales' universe. And she's, Miles isn't there. And then she realizes he has gone to Earth 42. 
that place didn't take him back to his one. It went back to the spider that was meant the spider that was supposed to be in Earth 42. And the Spider-Man that's not there because of Miles, the original anomaly, he's gone there. So she goes and she gets like the original crew from the first Spider-Man, which is Spider-Ham, Spider-Noir, Penny Parker, Spider-Woman, and her, and I think that's it, there might be more. I did. I did watch. The, I've only watched a film once, and that was um, about four hours ago that I watched it. Right, because it's ten. It's ten a.m. here. Ten p.m. Right, the second of June, twenty twenty-three, and the film finished for me at six min. Ten minutes past six. Right, yeah, ten minutes past six here. Right. So, I finished watching that movie about four hours ago. Pretty much four hours almost to the dot, right? Well, and three minutes, right? So, but yeah, as I say, amazing movie. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend you go watch the movie. Mo well, you probably watch it if you're watching this spoiler review. So, what do you guys think of that um, Spider-Man into Spider-Verse? What are your thoughts? Are you going to watch the next Spider-Man movie? Um, I, I think it's called Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. And it's coming out in 2024, right? As I said, for me, this is an absolute shock. Because I don't know. Apparently, it's not a surprise, right? People knew this was going to happen. This was expected. But I've not really been following the trailers. Or I've not been Googling anything to do with the Spider-Man. So I was unaware. So when it came up as to be continued. That hit me like a truck. Bro, that surprised me. And I was salty, man. I was like, I'm enjoying the movie, bro. You've got me. Don't do this to me. But it makes sense. Because no movie can... Keep on climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing for like two hours, over two hours. If it was over two hours or an hour and a half or an hour and 40 minutes or an hour and 50 minutes. I don't know how long the movie was. I haven't looked into it. I haven't looked into anything for this movie, by the way. Right. So it's just. When I thought about it, yeah, it makes sense. That's the reason they were so comfortable from the beginning. There's nothing wasted. They got a story to tell. You know, what I, I, makes me think back to um, that movie with Zack Snyder, Justice League. That movie was three hours. And if you watch the Snyder Cut version compared to the first version that came out in 2017, 2018, something like that. Same movie, not even the same movie though. I would give the original Justice League like a a 6 out of 10. I would give the Snyder Cut version a 9 out of 10. Not even the same. And there was so much in that movie. So it just goes to show that directors, if given free reign, they got a lot they want to talk about. They got a lot that they want. They got a story to tell, bro. Right? So now I look at it. Okay. Okay, they were given free reign and they've come up with a good story. And the story is good and every single character is interesting and there's no waste. So, um, yeah, that's my review for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Um, I would say, as I said before, 10 out of 10 movie. Best Spider-Man movie ever. Three. Like, there's no question in my mind. And, um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. What do you think of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse? As you can see, we even brought in Gwen Stacy to assist us in this review. Uh, and, yeah, feels good. Feels real good. And, uh, yeah, Warriors, on to my next video. Take care. Stay blessed. Thanks for watching. Yeah, share, like. Click the bell icon, subscribe so you know so you get notifications when my video goes live and stuff like that. And uh yeah.
We'll catch you in the next one. Later.